Good evening and welcome to this edition of Easy Friday. My name is Fred Indimuli and what a day it has been. Nine hours plus, seven judges of the Court of Appeal and finally, looking at the Twitter feed this evening, the word reggae pops up quite some a uh, few times. Absolutely. And uh, of course people know what they're exactly they're talking about. Has reggae stopped or not? And that will be the main feature this evening on Easy Friday. We'll be discussing that and interpreting what the Court of Appeal uh, verdict means going forward. My name is Shiksha Arora. You can get in touch, in touch with us at KBC Channel 1 at Shiksha Arora at Freddie Nimuli. The hashtag is Easy Friday. We'll be talking to some experts and, of course, discussing matters BBI. But for now, it's time for the top story of the day. Oh, yes. And uh, our sign language interpreter this evening is Susan Fuku. Let's kick off the bulletin. The Building Bridges Initiative is now dead. In an 11-hour judgment, the seven-judge bench of the appellate court centered its ruling that the Kenya constitution was anchored in a foundation with building blocks which can only be amended through a constituent power and not the route the BBI was taking. Now, the court in a judgment delivered by its president, Daniel Musinga, held that President Uhuru Kenyatta had no place under the constitution to initiate a popular initiative and that IEBC was not properly constituted to undertake any meaningful decision touching on a referendum. Now, those dissatisfied, however, can still seek solace at the Supreme Court. Let's take a look. Having determined all the issues that were, we considered germane in this consolidated appeals, the final orders of the court are as follows. A. We uphold the judgment of the High Court to the extent that we affirm the following. One, the basic structure doctrine is applicable in Kenya Sichale J.A. dissenting. Two, the basic structure doctrine limits the amendment power set in Articles 255 to 257 of the Constitution. Sichale J.A. dissenting. For you. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, I take this back. Two, the basic structure doctrine limits the uh, amendment power set out in, uh, in Articles 255 to 257 of the Constitution. Okwengu J.A. and Sichale J.A. That's what people are saying. Ben, take it away. Uh, good evening, coming to you live from Eldoret town in Wasingishu County. And you can hear from the background, the mood here is very clear. Residents are excited. They have been singing, they have been dancing from around 7 p.m. when the Court of Appeal uh, upheld the decision of the High Court by dismissing the appeal. And, and as you can hear from the background, the residents are so much excited. They are saying that um, they have been pushing, they have been, they have been criticizing uh, the BBI initiative, of course led by Deputy President William Ruto, saying that um, uh, the BBI process is not a priority for Kenyans at the moment. And according to them, they are so much excited and they are so much happy uh, that the, 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 the Court of Appeal has upheld the decision by the High Court. And uh, just, um, I just want to speak to a few residents here. Remember, uh, we've been here almost for the entire day, and we can report that majority of residents here were just doing, they were just doing their daily uh, activities. But as from 6 p.m., that is when now they started uh, to gather in various hotels just to wait for the verdict of the Court of Appeal. And even before Justice Musinga was able to issue the final orders, we saw people singing, they were dancing, they were so much sure that the Court of Appeal was going to, uh, was going to, uh, to stop the BBI process. So, so without much, um, let, me, let me speak to one of a candidate who is vying uh, for, the, for the parliamentary seat in Soy constituency under the UDA party. Please, can you introduce yourself? 
and briefly tell us what is your reaction towards the decision by the Court of Appeal today? Well, uh, thank you very much, KBC. We are very glad as Kenyans, we, uh, we feel that we have won as the citizens. This is a win for Kenyans, it's not a win for an individual because the priority in our country right now is to revive the economy and we feel like uh, BBI was a decisionary uh, activity while Kenyans we are focused into making sure that our economy is revived and that is the priority. My name is Dr. Meli, I am an aspirant for MP Soy constituency come 2022 and we are interested in making sure that our people recover from the effects of COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the ruling by the Court of Appeal today was uh, an upholding of the rule of the law. And we want to thank the team led by the President Justice Musinga for making sure that uh, the Constitution is respected and making sure that uh, the sovereignty of the people, pe power belongs to the people and nobody should be able to um, humiliate people using power. We are not interested in making sure that a few people who want to divide power amongst themselves. We are the Asla nation and we believe that we have to make sure that uh, our people get their rights and I think they got their right today. What does this mean to the UDA party? This is great to the Hustler Nation. The UDA party believes in making sure that people who are, people who are struggling economically, we believe in the bottom-up uh, economic recovery model. And uh, BBI was diverting a lot of resources that we would have actually used to empower our businesses which have been affected by COVID-19 and the economy which was in recession. And uh, the current leadership, that we esteem, which we know under the leadership of Deputy President William Ruto, is going to change this country because we believe in empowering the people. Some of the leaders who have been pushing the BBI initiative, including ODM party leader Raila Odinga, have issued a statement today saying that um, they are moving on. They are not going to challenge the decision at the Supreme Court. What is your reaction towards this? That is welcome. As the UDA nation, as the UDA party, we welcome that because Finally, they have appreciated that uh, the, the will of the people was being taken away. And we are glad that they are not going to challenge this at the Supreme Court. Because we want to move forward. We want to make sure that we proceed with plans to make sure that we elect credible leaders come 2022. We want to make sure Dr. William Ruto is in office as our president in 2022 so that we can work through the UDA which is uniting the whole nation. We are not interested in tribal kingpins which constitute themselves to make sure that they steal power from people. So our interest is to make sure that as Kenyans we are united from Mombasa to Busia, Eldoret being the home county of our next fifth president. We are glad, we are celebrating, we are happy. Thank you very much. As you can hear, that is the mood in Wasigishu County. And just before I hand it over to the main studio, labda ni zungumza na wewe, unadhani kwamba uamuzi wa leo umekuwa uamuzi wa Busara? Yeah, my name is Colin Skoske. I am a resident of Wasigishu County. I'm also happy for the for the rule by the the high the, the, the court of appeal sisi kama wakaji wa wasingishu tumefurahi sana kuona eh, koti imeamua leo kwamba sisi watu maasla watu wa tabaka la chini tumefurahia uamusi huo kwa sababu ile scheme ya dynasties ambayo walitaka kushurutisha wananchi wale watu wa, wa, wanao wanao wa, wa, wa tabaka la chini wasiopata eh, chochote Tunahomba kwamba Mungu anasimama nao. Asante sana. Thank you. Uh, that is what we have for you today, but we will keep uh, our viewers posted in our subsequent uh, news bulletin. Back to you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, ben Chumba reporting live from El uh, the streets of Eldore Town, sampling some of the views of the residents of that county, uh, the greater Wasingishu County, on... Uh, the day's happenings that uh, appeal uh, the ruling by the uh, Court of Appeal on the BBI process.
We now move on to Kitui County where we have Edward Kabasa. Absolutely. Let's uh, speak to Edward Kabasa and see what people are saying, get some reactions in. Are they happy with the decision or do they think that, well, hope is still there? Edward, what are people saying in Kitui? Good evening, Fred and Shiksha. Uh, a complete opposite of uh, what you have uh, seen from Eldoret. In Kitui, everyone has been minding their business the whole day, but uh, all in all, they have uh, heard about the decision at the Court of Appeal that the BBI process has been halted right on its tracks. And uh, I am joined by a gentleman here. Kumajina Unishurani. Kumajina yangu, naito Emmanuel Moinde, Kitui County Youth Leader. Na ni kona furaha tena sana 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 Kwa mana kwa mara ya kwanza Aki imetendeka Kenya Ya kwamba mahakama imepusidia mbali IBC Chenye naomba Rais Uhuru Kenyata na naibu Rais William Samuel Ruto Hii pesa yote walikuwa meweka juu ya kampeni ya BBI Hizo, hizo billion zote Wakuje wazipe youths Na akina mama Wafanye biashara Na hile ingine nataka kusema hapa ni kuwa ya kwamba mungu amejidhirisha ya kwamba uh, amejidhirisha ya kwamba uh, utajiri utajiri unaanza chini ukienda juu. Bottom up economy. Sasa hiyo ndi inaelekea na hiyo ndi itakuwa. Kwa hiyo hawa wajamaa wa, hawa wajamaa wa kieleweke lazima wajua ya kwamba mungu ameamua na chenye mungu ameamua hakuna na weza kusimamisha. Kwa maana but the same BBI was proposing that uh, more funds to be devolved to, to counties from the 15% to 35%. Uh, don't you think that perhaps uh, wa Kenya wameadaiwa? Uh, mimi kwa maoni yangu naona hiyo BBI ni mzuri hivyo imefanyiwa kulingana hii pesa unasema 35%. Kusema ukweli uh, 15% yenye napewa count atujaona ikifanyishwa kazi kwa ukweli au kwa usawa na kwa namna inayostahili kwa hivyo hii that 5% au magavana wanaitaka tu wajitajirishe wao wenyewe aisaidi wanjiko aisaidi mama mboga aisaidi mtu wa boda boda aisaidi mtu wa kuza mayai kwa hivyo chenye nataka kusema ya kwamba hii that 5% ni heri hivyo uh, uh, BBA imesimamishwa kusema right. kweli ilikuwa inatutaka kutuumiza asante sana i have another gentleman uh, karibu karibu um, what is your name sir Aka kwa majina ni Joyfred Peter the supervisory committee chairman of the larger Kituira Das Boda Boda Sako. Yes. Now what what is your opinion on on the uh, failure by the BBI uh, to make it through the court of appeal? Mimi kwangu ni sherehe shangwe na ndereme sababu tumeona ni kama kuanguka kwa BBI ni kuondolewa kwa mzigo kwa wa Kenya. Mzigo ambao ulikuwa umebebeshwa wa Kenya ambao ingeleta mtafaruku katika hali ya uchumi wa Kenya. Kwa maana ukiangalia BBI ilikuwa inaleta kuongeza nyadhifa za uongozi kwa wakubwa wetu lakini hakuna mahali BBI ilikuwa inaongelelea ama kwa nani kabisa vile ambavyo mwananchi wa kawaida angeweza kusaidika. Kwa hivyo what what else um, what direction do you want the country to take we have one year to the general election and already campaign is underway um, we have people who want to be leaders what is your message to Kenyans especially young people how do they go about it electing their leaders mimi kwanza kwa viongozi wetu ningependa kusema hivi ya kwanza viongozi wetu wasimamishe siasa kabisa kabisa wachukua huu muda ambao umebakia kutuonyesha kwamba wanaweza kufanyia wananchi kile ambacho waliahidi huu sio wakati wa kupiga siasa huu sio wakati wa kupiga siasa duni za vita huu ni wakati wa kuonyesha wananchi kwamba unaweza tufanyia kazi alafu tukishafika kwenye debe tutawapigia kura tuchague yule anayefaa alafu kwa vijana wetu ningependa kusema hivi Huu ndio wakati wa kuchagua wale viongozi ambao watawanufaisha nyinyi kama vijana. Msidanganywe, msitishwe na siasa duni za kupiganishwa hapa na pale. Chagueni viongozi sio wale wanaowapatia pesa, sio wale wanaowapa promises ambazo ni za uongo hapa na pale. Chagueni viongozi ambao mko shuu ambao wataweza kuchukua sera za vijana kina mama, mama mboga na wale wengine wadogo wadogo ambao wakaweza kuwasaidia na kuinua juu. All right, uh, Fred and uh, Shiksha, uh, those are some of the views of uh, uh, residents of Kitui County.
as the case was being um, determined at the Court of Appeal, uh, largely everyone here was minding their own business. Uh, there is a lot that uh, was happening uh, and of course there are those who were uh, paying attention to the happenings at the Court of Appeal. And uh, unlike Eldoret, uh, Kitui County has been calm. Uh, there is not so much to celebrate, but according to uh, what you have heard, uh, there is that opinion that perhaps it's time for the country to move forward. Live from Kitui County, Kitui Town, I am Edward Kabasa. Back to you. Thank you very much. That's Edward from Kitui for those reactions. Now moving on, Kenyan leaders have taken to social media to voice their thoughts on the Court of Appeal judgment on the BBI appeals case. ODM party leader Raila Odinga, who was among those who had appealed the High Court ruling, said though the, uh, the party accepts the court's ruling, it is not the end of the conversation. Raila said the parties involved in the BBI process will make their own decisions on the way forward. Now, Mani National, party, uh, Mani National Congress Party leader Masali Mudavadi now says he respects the ruling by the Court of Appeal that has thrown out the BBI process. Mudavadi, however, says the process can be salvaged through Parliament. The Court of Appeal upholding the High Court ruling on BBI, therefore, one, ANC respects the decision of the Court of Appeal to uphold the High Court won on the BBI matter. This buttresses our unwavering belief in the rule of law and independence of the judiciary and other independent offices and commissions set out in the Constitution. It affirms the confidence we have in our judges to discharge their constitutional duty of interpreting the Constitution for which I have no doubt they have done purely on the basis of their reading of the law and impartially as their oath of office requires of them. Secondly, ANC supported BBI for its beneficial clauses to Kenyans. When we say it is time to move on, we mean that those con non-contentious articles in the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020 can be salvaged through a bipartisan, national and parliamentary process. We therefore encourage Parliament to seize this moment and lead Kenyans in a collective process that salvages what is useful from BBI. Now, the basic doctrine structure of the Constitution formed the core ruling of the appeal against the High Court uh, ruling nullifying the uh, Building Bridges Initiative Bill. Five of the Court of the Appeal judges were in agreement with the High Court that the Kenyan Constitution had a foundation that could be altered by the constituent power. Justices Fatuma Sichale and Rosaline Nambuye were all of the view that the Constitution was a living document and that Kenyans' hands should not be tied on how to change it. Justices Daniel Musinga, Patrick Kiage, Francis Tuyot, Kairu Gatembo, and Hano Kwengo affirmed the High Court decision on the basic structure doctrine and that it's part of jurisprudence and it's not an alien concept as some had submitted. But should a need for judicial inquiry arise as to what a matter, whether a matter is part of the basic structure of our constitution, then that inquiry will not be rudderless neither will it be an unguided exercise because it is firmly beaconed in Article 255.1. Dependence of the judiciary should be entrenched in the Constitution. Two, the Constitution should ensure that there is no interference in the judiciary by the executive and by politicians. End of quote. If, if this is not executive interference, in the work of the judiciary, then I do not know what else amounts to such interference. 
However, Lady Justice Fatuma Sichale differed with the High Court ruling saying that the basic structure doctrine does not apply to Kenya because rigidity to amend the constitution could lead to a revolution. The findings of the High Court were not supported by the context, structure and history of the constitution 2010. The upshot of the above analysis is that the appellant's appeal on the non-applicability of the basic structure is for allowing. However, this is subject to the majority decision of this court. She also differed from the High Court ruling on the IABC quorum issue. Verification of sig signatures is not a matter that arises out of the res resolution or decisions made by the commissioners at a meeting of the commission. Uh, but one dict dictated by the operation of the law, as the process of verification of sig signatures is not a policy decision to require the IBC to be correct. Justices to Yot Gatembu Kiage Hana Okwengu upheld the High Court ruling that IABC had no quorum to undertake such a matter of verifying BBI signatures. The effect of the decision was to sustain the quorum at five or at least four to hold that the quorum could be anything less than half of the membership of seven is to weaken the commission. It is common ground that IBC formulated administrative procedures to guide on the verification of signatures in support of a constitutional amendment in support of a constitutional amendment. I would therefore agree with and affirm the landed judges holding that all the decisions made by IBC in relation to the proposed constitutional amendments by the BBI amendment bill were invalid, null and void for lack of quorum. The judges also upheld the High Court ruling that the president can be sued in his personal capacity for anything done or not done in that capacity. They said the president was acting in his official capacity and not as a private citizen when he initiated BBI. But when it comes to uh, civil proceedings, the president is not insulated if he does anything or fails to do anything in his own personal capacity. On the popular initiative, the appellate judges were in agreement that President Uhuru Kenyatta cannot initiate a popular initiative as the constitution had given him appropriate instruments to make changes if he so wanted. Commend the president's efforts in fostering the unity of the nation. The president is not an ordinary citizen. He remains the president in the political arena throughout his tenure. He cannot temporarily remove his executive mantle in order to engage in a popular initiative, which is a process that has been reserved for citizens. His role in amendment of the Constitution is at the, at the tail end of the process, as provided under Article 2565 and 2579 of the Constitution. The judges also say that there was no evidence to show there was meaningful public participation which rendered the process constitutionally unsustainable. Suleiman Yeri, Easy Friday. It's been such a long day, it's time to take a break. This is Easy Friday. We'll be back in a short while. Make sure you interact with us. The hashtag is Easy Friday. Talk to us on Twitter at KBC Channel 1, at Shiksha Aurora, at Fred and Let's oh, yes. take that short break. Kupata aliye mzuri kama skiza tune, bonyeza star 811 star 817 hash. Usiwahi kumwacha mtu mzuri kwa matarajio ya kumpata mzuri zaidi. Kwani unaporejea kumtafuta aliye mzuri, utampata alishaponyoka na kumpata anayemdhamini. Kupata aliye mzuri kama skiza tune, bonyeza star 811 star 817 hash. Star 811 star 817 hash Guksa me kuchepe story yote ya benefits za dad kwa kampuni alikuwa anafanya job Could it be that Ken named you next of kin cuz why else would they be calling you Ah wonder who's in mamako Mwenye alikuwa next of kin Joyce Mbona the house is up for auction too. Get up. What? 
Unaonyesha nini mtoto? She has the worst hangover of her life. I think it's high time upatie our safe space. Be positive. You don't even have a job. Take a musical trip around Africa right here on KBC Channel 1. Every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. on Afro Vibes. Because this is the hottest show right now. We give you a musical cocktail from North Africa, Central Africa, West, South and East of Africa. We are live and we are loud. Where about it today? I want to show them my attitude. Your Sunday will never be the same again with DJ D and DJ Leo on Afro Vibes. Your musical passport to Africa. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself. So when this time came, I knew there was something I wanted to say about mm, Kisumu. Yeah. So that I, I had this Kisumu mm, town. Yes. The picture in me, mm. the, the the people, yeah. the kind of transport. Yes. When you go to Kisumu, mm. you, you, you can go by air, you yes. know we are Jalus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can fly to Kisumu. Yes. You can use different means. Yes. I was in clubs, entertaining, mm, yes. dancing. Mm. I'm a good dancer. Very. I was dancing in Dombolo. Yes. Your solo. Yeah. If you know Dombolo. Yes. I don't know if you should <laughs> know, to love Lingala music. I love Lingala. Me, I'm a serious dancer. I was. And I'm still a yes. serious dancer. Yes. Degei do te da wina. Ay, ay, ay. Te da di amba kisumo. Kisumo ber kisumo. Hey, I'm Susan Wheel. Catch me on the Cynthia Nyamai's show. Welcome back. You're still watching Easy Friday right here on KBC Channel 1. And it's time to delve deeper into the big news of the day, and that is a court of appeal verdict on that uh, appeal filed uh, trying to salvage the BBI process. Remember, the High Court had uh, uh, nullified that entire process, and now the court of appeal has agreed with the High Court. Now, to help us discuss this matter, I have three gentlemen, a fine gentleman, officers of the court. Uh, they are all advocates, and uh, on my immediate uh, left, we do have Stanley Kenyanjui, an advocate of the High Court, on Twitter at Stan Kenyanjui. Yes, that's correct. Karibusana. Uh, next to Bona Kenyanjui, we do have Ochiel Dudley, uh, and uh, he is uh, also an advocate of the High Court. And curiously, he was appearing for Dr. Jack Muimali, who was a respondent uh, in the proceedings today before the uh, seven judge bench of the Court of Appeal. On Twitter, he's at Ochiel JD. Karibu sana, Buana Ochiel. Thank you. And uh, on my extreme left, Buana Omayo Aranga, also an advocate of the High Court. On Twitter, Omayo underscore Aranga. Gentlemen, karibu sana. Now, we, we're trying simply to break it down to the common one, ain't you? Because it's been a very long day for you officers of the court. You've been following word after word, pronouncement after pronouncement by the judges. And for us, the media have been covering the event uh, the entire day, 11 hours nonstop. Um, we cannot say it is unprecedented, but definitely one of those uh, big days in Kenyan history. A few things do occur, and uh, the major one uh, is that, uh, according to the interpretation by many of the citizens, is that reggae has stopped, but has it? Let's start with you, uh, Stanley. Well, uh, we can indeed say that reggae has stopped because um, the substantive part of the appeal has been dismissed. Mm -hmm. You know, what is really going to go into the hearts and the minds of Kenyans is that BBI has stopped. Because without the substantive part of the BBI, that is after it has been ruled unconstitutional, then there's nothing much uh, we can do about it. It has been dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I can confidently say at the, as at this moment is that the High Court uh, killed BBI. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the court of appeal can uh, likely put it as uh, the government pathologies mm -hmm. to just and to just come and confirm to the people what really killed bbi yet 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 uh, according to our understanding is that uh, the uh, court of appeal is not uh, the final uh, has no final say you could still uh, go higher than the court of appeal probably to the supreme court and uh, is that still a possibility yes i see some parties going to the court of appeal which will to the have, supreme court to the supreme court sorry yes. which will have the final say on this matter mm -hmm. but remember fred we've had 12 judges so far and a majority of them have already said that the bbi process is unlawful mm -hmm. so that there isn't likely to be any much difference in my own view of the of the matter but when we tell you've uh, interacted with uh, uh, the city councils who are pushing uh, this appeal process uh, today and uh, was there any indication that any of them could actually pursue that route go to the Supreme Court well I've heard some of them saying that they would love to take a look at the judgment remember we'll get copies on Monday and then talk to their clients then they could decide what to do so but there is know. a possibility yeah there's a possibility. Do, do you think it makes any sense for anyone to move to the Supreme Court? Uh, Twelve judges later, the High Court and the Court of Appeal, basically what would the argument be, if at all, anyone goes to, uh, to the Supreme Court? Well, Fred, uh, my thinking is that uh, the, wisdom of, the wisdom of having an appellate uh, mechanism is to ensure that the same is exploited. Now, in as much as we have uh, more... Uh, 12 judges who have made a determination on the same, there's every possibility of having again a majority. I want to be neutral mm -hmm. because uh, I want to, I want us to have uh, the appeal mechanism as an academic exercise. So, uh, whoever is aggrieved, and uh, you could see clearly from the parties uh, before the court of appeal, uh, the appellants. Some of them give indications, some of them, uh, some of the political uh, pre players, you could see the right, Honorable Roy, Roy Lodinga, indicate that for him he has moved on. But for the rest of uh, the players, mm -hmm. they'll make individual decisions. And as my colleague has just indicated to you and our viewers, what is likely to happen is uh, that uh, by Monday, when we will have the certified copies of the judgments out, we're going to see the singular decisions by parties that were at the court of mm -hmm. appeal i want to insist that uh, the uh, making an appeal is uh, in my view not academic for 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 the reason that it is provided for mm -hmm. insofar as we have uh, now 12 judges are ruling a ruling or de delivering a judgment against the bbi there is still whoever is optimistic will yes. want to go there and argue their case uh, and with, uh, that optimism and even that, that has happened before yes we've had a scenario in which you can find a high court uh, thinking otherwise uh, the court of appeal thinking otherwise and, and the court of court. appeal overturning yes. Yes. the two so, so so if at all probably the, the the court of appeal had disagreed with the high court then probably the need for the supreme court uh, to be drawn into this would be necessary but even uh, because you're, you're talking about an academic uh, issue and i'm sure probably within legal circles there are those who would want probably for the sake of jurisprudence uh, just to see if what would the supreme court have to say about this would deep be necessary now that the court of appeal has agreed with the high court oh, well uh if you are to look at the circumstances as they are, as they are right now uh in my opinion i think it would be a very uh fruitless venture mm. to go to the supreme court because like i said at the beginning there's the substantive part that holds the bbi process together and that is whether it was legal or not mm. and if you look at the majority of the judgment uh it goes directly to the heart as to whether it was illegal or not you see the question that was really prime in this circumstance mm -hmm. was whether the initiative as initiated by the steering committee was legal mm -hmm. and once that was held to be illegal then that's a that's a gone case and that's one of the big pronouncements today the fact that the president cannot institute a popular initiative uh bueno chill uh what, where does that leave us now? Uh, because probably we are still exercising uh, our power within this constitution. We still do not know exactly where we can press, what we can poke here and there. Uh, now, 
uh, we have learned today that the president cannot in institute popular initiative. Some of these pronouncements beyond even the BBI process uh, will be of importance going forward. Uh, what do you say to that? I think we're yet, you're right, that we're yet to realize the full impact of this decision today. And on the point that you're speaking about, the court has affirmed Wanjiku's power by saying that Wanjiku's power is special, it's separate from those of our elected representatives. Mm -hmm. And that's important also because of a point that the court made, that there are some kind of changes to the constitution which only Wanjiku can make. Mm -hmm. And if you remember the BOMAS process, we had these assemblies at the district level, and then we also had delegates from all over the country meeting at BOMAS. That's what we call a constituent assembly. Mm -hmm. So that to change some parts of the constitution, you have to go through that four-stage process, a constituent assembly, referendum at the end, but also public participation mm -hmm. and civic education. I think the, high, the court just puts Wanjiku yes. at the center of this. And that's probably one thing that Wanjiku did not even know, uh, just how much power uh, Wanjiku holds in this entire process or in the, any process when it comes to amending the constitution. Let's continue taking sampling some of the views from uh, our viewers across the country. Uh, Timothy Kipnusu, my colleague, is in Nakuru. Timothy, what do the people of Nakuru say about the happenings today? Very good evening to you, Fred Indomoli, there at the uh, broadcasting house in Nairobi. Yes, indeed, I'm coming to you live from Nakuru County. I've been here for the better part of today to get uh, uh, the views from the resident of this uh, particular county uh, in regards to the uh, ruling or the judgment of the uh, Court of Appeal of 7th Judge Abenja. Bear in mind, this is the third largest county in the Republic of Kenya, and it has been shaping a political landscape in any uh, electioneering uh, period. And uh, joining me is a gentleman, uh, Petras, tell us, uh, uh, what, how do you feel, uh, what's the take, your take about the decision that has been made by the seven judge bench? Yeah, sisi kama fijana, tumefrai sana, majaji kwangusha, BBI. BBI, kama venye tulisema, reggae must stop. Yeah, tumona reggae imesimama. Yeah, BBI was a waste of time. Iyo ni kuopoteza, pesa. Fijana tungekuwa tumepewa kazi tusaidie vijana wenzetu wapate kazi kuna vijana wengi hawana kazi tungekuwa tumewasaidia vijana kama hawa wajiendeleze ki wajiendeleze Asante yeah. pengine nipate maoni mengine uh, unaitwa nani na pengine uamuzi wa majaji wa mahakama ya rufaa kuhusiana na kutupili mbali uh, mchakato wa kufanyia katiba marekebisho uh, Naitwa Robert kuhusu uh, BBI ile ambayo imeangushwa ninaungana na mkono na the seven charges ya kwamba sisi kama vijana tuko na furaha leo kabisa kwa sababu ya hii monster na ambayo inaitwa BBI unasaona kwamba hii wakati BBI from 2017 awamu ya pili ya rais ya Kenyatta in uh, we have lost about four items kama Kenya ya kwanza ni chama jubili ambayo imehanguka ya pili ni what you call the big four agenda imehanguka ya tatu ni opposition ambayo ilikuwa very strong hiyo na pia imeanguka sababu ya BBI haya mwisho leo ni BBI yenyewe imekufa kabisa Ka Asante. Pengine maoni moja kutoka kwa mudumu wa boda boda kusema BBI. Raila Odinga ambaye alikuwa anaendeza mchakato huu ame Well, thank you so much, Timothy Kipnosu, as he continues sampling some of the views of our viewers in Nakuru County. From Nakuru, let's head to Kisumu, where Simon Achola is, in, uh, uh, is on standby, but uh, I'm informed we'll be joining Achola uh, some minutes from now. Let's come back to my guests in studio. And there have been many pronouncements today. Away from the main fact that BBI has been halted, uh, the entire process has been halted, there are issues to do with the IEBC and uh, the fact that uh, it does not have enough quorum to do quite a number of things. Uh, probably uh, you come in there, Bwana Omayo Aranga, and uh, it is less than a year to the next general election. Yes, come August next year, uh, we'll be required, fine, there's no referendum now, but uh, um, we found ourselves in this position uh, before, that uh, months before the elections, we are wondering whether or not IEBC is properly constituted to actually conduct that election. Do you think it's an issue that should be uh, probably uh, given more, uh, put in, uh, 
put on the spotlight uh, because now the court has made a pronouncement on it. The fact that IEBC does not have quorum to conduct a number of these issues. Very well, uh, Fred. What you can realize is that after the after the interviews that were conducted on uh, prospective candidates of the IEBC, we've had names forwarded to the to Parliament for approval. What that means is there is a deliberate effort to have the IEBC properly constituted and also to have the quorum. The Court of Appeal from today's uh, judgment was clear that uh, quorum, and, and, and again it went even a, uh, a step further to distinguish between uh, being constituted uh, in the constitutional per se and uh, the quorum. On the question of on the question of quorum, that was uh, left to the IEBC Act, mm -hmm. which now talks about the, 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 the what they were referring commonly as uh, the quorate. Mm -hmm. For them to conduct any business, how many um, commissioners sh should they have? The, it was almost unanimous. Most of them, say for um, Lady Justice uh, Sichale, it was clear that. Uh, they must be at least five. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the judges, Justice uh, the Temple, was clear that uh, to sanction the issue that you can have three, the minimum, the constitutional minimum as per the independent bodies, was to encourage the appointing authority to be uh, to, to, to be l the laxity in the appointing authority. Mm -hmm. Remember, we've had these positions vacant for, for a very, a long, very time. long time. And uh, the appointing authority, being the president, is excellence the president, has been uh, just silent on what is supposed to happen. So going forward, the Court of Appeal has set the pace. And uh, this uh, Solomonic, in my view, such that going forward, whoever is supposed to give or issue any or institute any appointment is going to take that job seriously. Mm -hmm. Today, the president was injured. Luckily, he was able to get away with uh, some of uh, a few issues uh, on uh, the, pre the, the decision of the, the High Court in view of the fact that uh, the Court of Appeal vindicated him only on the basis that he was not served. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we were having a president who had, uh, who had been declared uh, to have violated Chapter 6, chapter six Fit 4, removal yeah. okay. and impeachment. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and I know uh, some of these questions are more political uh, than uh, legal. But uh, I'm informed now Simon Achola is available for us all the way in Kisumu. Kisumu uh, definitely, uh, definitely should have some reaction uh, to today's proceedings. Simon Achola, a very good evening to you. What are the people of Kisumu saying about the happenings today? Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Fred. Of course, uh, this is a judgment that, of course, most people from this uh, part of uh, the country have actually been uh, following keenly, just wanting to know exactly what will come of it. And, uh, of course, uh, as uh, the judgment has already been um, uh, put out there, uh, and it's slowly sinking in, one of the many questions that uh, people from uh, not just reg this region, but, of course, across the country will be asking themselves is uh, what happens uh, to the, the, some of the good elements that are actually uh, in the BBI and of course to break it down for us is a uh, lawyer Ken Amundi who will actually be telling us Ken uh, yes the judgment has actually been uh, uh, put out there uh, there are so many good elements in the BBI uh, what next uh, let me uh, start by saying that indeed uh, it's uh, agreed that we had a lot of very good uh, uh, propositions in terms of proposals within the BBI document and uh, I want to say that uh, the way forward, and of course that would be the uh, recommendation that I would give the uh, proponents, is that we have quite a number of the proposals that can actually be enforced by way of legislative action. We have quite a number of proposals that could also be uh, put in place by way of uh, proper policy uh, frameworks. You do realize that, uh, I want to believe that given the uh, current majority enjoyed in a uh, parliament by the BBI proponents, it would be possible, for instance, to... Uh, it will be possible, for instance, to, as it were, uh, put in place uh, mechanisms uh, through which uh, 
Okay, and this does not need a uh, parliament. I mean, within the uh, uh, treasury, it would still be possible to increase the disbursements to uh, counties within the level that is proposed within the uh, BBI uh, document. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, again, I also want to say that uh, in as much as uh, it might seem like uh, a setback to the BBI proponents, let us look at this thing from the perspective that what the court was looking into was the process. And in fact, if I now interrogate the aspect of probably mutilating what they described as uh, the basic structure, the continence of the constitution, you see, if you do not make that uh, aspect of uh, you know constitutional amendment uh, difficult by you know putting the threshold high then it is possible that in future you see now the current proponents may be having a, a good motive but you never know in future you may have a rogue for a president who might then you know use the very same uh, formula to mutilate the constitution in such a way that you know even uh, tinker with the uh, tenants like uh, uh, human rights and such like provision so that uh, let me say that uh, the decision by the uh, court of appeal should be taken as a proper uh, learning uh, experience. Uh, let us therefore now see what are some of those proposals that we can uh, put in place through legislative action, through policy action, and then of course when it comes to uh, amendment of the constitution and more so when it touches on those basic uh, tenants uh, which are de describing as a, the elements that cannot be you know, easily uh, amended as it were then we must have a uh, uh, we must have a, a constitutional amendment uh, framework or law that uh, captures properly the process right from the constitution of what was described as the constituent uh, assembly mm -hmm. all the way to ensuring that public participation is uh, properly done so that the citizens are effective effectively participate in the, the process, uh, process and yeah. own it all the way fantastic ken uh, just in um, uh, 10 seconds yes we, the ruling has uh, the, the judgment is uh, is already out there, yes. and of course uh, we have said that the good uh, elements in the BBI can actually be dealt with in terms of ensuring the policies and uh, and what have you from the treasury to ensure that indeed they are actually implemented. Yes. Then the what happens for the politicians? Just in that in, in ten seconds. Uh, I, I think for the politicians, uh, to some extent, you may need a call to go back to the drawing board in the sense that uh, probably and more so in respect to the aspect of the executive structure of government, the same would have assisted at least when it comes to building coalitions because as it stands now, then it means that we only have two major positions within the executive structure. The remaining is the cabinet. But I want to say that uh, uh, if we look at the last elections that we had, and if you remember the uh, NASA coalition, it was done within the framework of the current constitution. And we also have to bear in mind that the presidential powers, as it stands now, it is still possible that the president can create uh, alternative positions as was in the NASA uh, arrangement which would still uh, cater for you know the various uh, interest groups represented by the core figures in the impending uh, year 2022. But can, on the flip side that means that then the coming election will purely be on issues and not about positions? Uh, basically, that is the thing. Yeah. It would then mean that uh, uh, somehow uh, we will have to see how we can uh, craft our, you know, uh, policies and the agendas. That we wow, it is always re so refreshing to hear members of the public articulate some of these legal matters so clearly. That has been uh, Simon Achola summoning views from uh, the viewers in Kisumu with regard to the happenings today at the Court of Appeal. I'm still in studio with uh, Stanley Kinyanjui, Ochil Dudli, and Omayo Aranga, all uh, officers of the court. They're all advocates. And we continue discussing this issue about the BBI process being halted by the Court of Appeal. Um, well, just before uh, we went to Kisumu, we were talking about the pronouncement uh, by the court on the fact that the IEBC currently, as currently is, does not have quorum to actually conduct some of the business that would have been very vital uh, at this point, if at all, uh, the referendum process was to continue. And when I chair Ludley, you wanted to say something about that. Well, I wanted to ask the question, when did 
Commissioner Kombe resigned from IBC. Mm -hmm. When did back. when did Commissioner Conin Katha mm -hmm. resign from the IBC? I, I think the message the court has sent to us is that we must not use vacancies in the IBC to play politics. We must not keep vacancies in IBC there for long. They must be filled up. The act gives 14 days for the president to declare vacancies. But then we are we still have vacancies four years later. Mm -hmm. I think if the court had said that IBC was okay with the three commissioners, then it would have been sending the message that it's okay to keep va IBC with vacancies for long, mm -hmm. and that it has no consequence. Yeah. Uh, um, even as we wrap up uh, this discussion, the other pronouncements that are going to be very important going forward, uh, first uh, on the IEBC, its constitution, and the timelines uh, of filling up uh, vacancies, but also pronouncements with regard to the president and the powers he has. I, I think that is also something very major, uh, the fact that uh, he can be uh, sued in a civil suit. Uh, he got a reprieve and as far as uh, him defying uh, chapter 6 of the constitution is concerned but the fact that he overstepped his mandate by instituting uh, a popular initiative the fact that now he uh, the court of appeal as far as is concerned is, co is okay with the president being taken to court on a civil matter that will definitely uh, have uh, repercussions going forward uh, yes that w that is actually true because uh, what we've seen is that uh, if we were to play back the, the judgment by Kiage, it was very clear that the process of initiating the referendum it was continuous. There's no point whereby we can come and say, stop, let's start from here. Let's start from the steering committee. It has to come from when the handshake started. And the Gazette notice that came, it had uh, His Excellency's ratings all over it. So by virtue of him being in that process, instigating that process from the point of the handshake to the point where it is right now. That is what he cannot do mm -hmm. because he does not have the mandate that can be carried by a citizen. See, the logic was very simple, that an initiative under Article 257 can only be conducted or initiated by the citizen by the common 190 and if it comes to any other initiative then 256 comes into play mm -hmm. whereby we have the entire parliament process set up but as it stands it is indeed a good message that there are limits that we can use the state power and there is a way that uh, the government or rather the executive in this case has to be tamed mm -hmm. yes uh, but uh, the gentleman in, uh, speaking from Kisumu just mentioned the fact that uh, because we still believe that uh, in presidential powers that uh, the president is so powerful and he can still do a few things here and there going forward uh, now politics is going to change and this is more political than legal probably the fact that even the discussions we've been having so far about bringing people together probably for purposes of sharing positions someone mentioned just now that the president can still do it that probably uh, he could come up with the same formation that NASA had and still share out some positions but according to the pronouncements by the court today isn't that what exactly what the court said that the president cannot do I think the gentleman from Kisumu was referring to the president's other options and it's right that the president can still do it because if there's a bill in parliament already that has taken off one aspect of BBI, the part that ministers can be appointed from parliament. You know, you can appoint a minister and then call him a prime minister. It would still arrive at the same des destination. We would have a minister. So there's a bill in parliament. Maybe we need to take a look at that and see if it complies with today's judgment. Yes. Yeah. And of course, the many pronouncements by the Court of Appeal mean that uh, we are getting, we are gaining some new understanding of the Constitution mm -hmm. and how we can conduct referendum, uh, referenda going forward, and even elections and all these other processes. There was mention of the need to probably have a referendum act. 
to iron out some of these things just so that uh, something we can refer to uh, so that because the assumption is the president has the attorney general that is uh, beck and call and uh, if at all the attorney general had this understanding then the president would have not been caught uh, flat-footed on this one uh, Fred perhaps before I answer your question there was, the <coughs> there was the immediate question you asked my uh, learned uh, councils uh, officers of the court on uh, the issue of uh, the guy from Kisumu what I uh, perhaps my very brief uh, contribution to that what I got from the understanding of uh, the people from Kisumu or the gentleman from Kisumu is that uh, the this about what the Oka people have been uh, salivating at positions and uh, while my land friend indicates that you can still appoint a minister and call him a prime minister remember under the current dispensation we have the president has only the latitude of appointing up to 22 cabinet secretaries mm -hmm. and in the current dispensation you'll realize that still he has only one super minister in uh, the cabinet in minister for interior therefore there is nothing that is going to change so we're going to see political realignments based on what has happened because it has far-reaching implications people who are waiting to be deputy prime minister mm -hmm. are not going to have those things okay now perhaps the issue of uh, uh, the possibility of having a referendum act to actually very well. guide us. with the issue of having a referendum act you'll realize that most of uh, the proponents uh, uh, the people who are opposing what was happening with bbi were saying that the ibc could not conduct a referendum without laws stipulating on quite a number of issues preceding conduction of a uh, a referendum some of these issues could concern with the uh, could uh, stipulate uh, the actual conduct of IBC on questions like verification that was featured uh, in today's uh, judgment that uh, the court was uh, a bit lenient that it could not supervise how an independent body conducts itself but where the court got or uh, found IBC flatfoot is the fact that uh, proponents, uh, my learned scene here will uh, uh, reliably inform you that uh, they were saying that, uh, or they were in a way opining that there could be some scientific way of uh, making sure that all the signatures were verified, had been verified mm -hmm. scientifically by IBC. That was not the case. IBC de uh, depended on the affidavits that uh, that was done by putting the names and signatures of those people on their website the only technicality was that the duration within which that was uh, rolled out mm -hmm. and that uh, the general public were informed that the 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 list of the people who are supporting the bill the bbi bill has been published had not been done that was the only thing so rightly as you said we must have uh, a law on some of these salient issues on how mm -hmm. the that guide on uh, guide IBC for instance on how to conduct itself yes. on the question of but Ochel, uh, we, we've been accused of having laws just for the sake of laws don't you think that uh, if we go that route we'll just be adding more uh, writing to paper uh, just having more laws for the sake of it well I don't think so if a referendum needs money, you'll need a secretariat, for example, campaign teams. If you as timelines, yeah, and timelines. If you as Fred had a, have a, had a proposal, like the one Okoiti had a few years back, and you want to suggest an amendment to the constitution, and a large number of people agree with you, a million, how do you process it? There's that gap now. Yes. Uh, there's the issue of funding for this campaign because you need to fund them equally for the sake of transparency and fairness of referendum because they're just like elections. So they should be funded equally. The they referendum campaign together. committees. Okay. There's a gap in that area. So I think there's need for the law. Oh, your, your opinion on the same as well? Pat? Well, uh, mine is a little bit uh, revolutionary because we have a country whereby we have procedural laws but 
there is the issue of having laws and there's the issue of implementing them or following them. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Professor Pierre Lobon Lumumba says that it is not the abundance of laws that make us a country, or rather it's not the abundance of laws that can govern us properly. We need to have an internal change. We need to change our behavioral DNA so that we can be able to do what is good and right. Okay. And uh, the good thing is that right now, Kenyans are very human rights conscious. We are very much aware of our rights. And the upshot of having these laws is that there will be litigation, litigation mm -hmm. until one party eventually gives it. Wow. And it is really my hope that the executive actually mm -hmm. gives it. It is not the abundance of laws that make us a country. Let's uh, end it there. Thank you so much, uh, Stanley Kinyanjui, uh, an advocate of the High Court at Stan Kinyanjui on Twitter. Do have Ochel Dudley uh, at Ochel JD on Twitter. Uh, incidentally, uh, when Ochel Dudley was appearing for Dr. Jack Mwimali, a respondent in the appeal today before uh, the Court of Appeal. And we also had in studio Omayo Aranga, also an advocate of the High Court. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for helping our viewers understand better what the Court of Appeal was talking about the whole day because it was quite a lot of legal jargon. Time now for another break, and we'll have more news after this. Easy Friday. My name is Fayaz Qureshi. After a long spell, I'm back and ready. And conversation with a Kenyan legend on their work and life. Tune in to the Legends Edition this and every Saturday at 9 p.m. on KBC Channel One. My name is Jim. Cape is home to an animal that is revered all around the world. I love lions because many people think that lions are dangerous, but lions are not dangerous actually. So far we found a footprint of hyenas and leopard on this riverbed, but we haven't yet seen any signs of lions. Lions are actually disappearing in the world. If nothing will be done in Kenya actually, I think we'll be losing lions in the next 20 years. Take a musical trip around Africa right here on KBC Channel 1. Every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. on Afro Vibes. Because this is the hottest show right now. We give you a musical cocktail from... East of Africa. We are live and we are loud. Where about it today? I want to show them my attitude. Your Sunday will never be the same again with DJ D and DJ Leo on Afro Vibes. Your musical passport to Africa. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself. Get in touch swiftly on email newsroom at kbc.co.ke. Call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124.
Right, and on to some very exciting news as we have clinched other gold medal and bronze in the World Under-20 Athletics Championship that entered its third day at Kasarani Stadium. Now, this is after sensational and a dazzling junior athlete, Jacqueline Chepkoic, and Faith Chirotich, who finished in the first and third positions, respectively, in the 3,000 meter steeplechase final. Meanwhile, Winnie Jemutai and Purity Chepkiroi advanced to the final of 1,500 meters that will be held this Sunday. Here she is, then battling in this group of four. Chep Kurui, who was making her debut at international stage, showed a stellar performance in hit two, clocking four minutes 22.10 seconds, while Ethiopian Hewat Mehari finished second, timing four minutes 22.37 seconds. Mayem Azur of Madagascar settled for the third position in four minutes 24.50 seconds. I know I've said it before, but at altitude, um, that's really tested these athletes, and it's interesting to see how Jep Kiru had coped with that and how how the Ethiopian athlete could cope with that as well, Mahari. It's going to be interesting to me. I'm going to go to the qualify, I'm going to go to the final. I'm going to go to the final, I'm going to go to the gold. Yeah, to the control. At least the party is still at the end of the finals. I'm going to go to the field, I'm going to go to the field, I'm going to go to the field, to support. This year's edition has attracted close to 1,000 athletes from different nations of the world. Hey, Titakili, this is mine, mate. Let me have it. Well, definitely, congratulations are in order for Jacqueline Chipkoech for winning that gold medal for Kenya. Absolutely exciting time indeed. All right, now moving on to the next story. The Kenya National Paralympics team is also a part of, uh, you know, the successful teams that have taken part this particular under-20 championships. Yeah. And we've seen many athletes emerge winners. Of course, Kenya right now has a couple of goals, which yes. we will definitely be seeing more of in the future. And that's why we're finishing this particular edition of Easy Friday on an absolute high. Oh, yes. 20th of August. Uh 2021, the day when the Court of Appeal upheld the High Court judgment shielding the Constitution from amendments through the Building Bridges Initiative. Remember, Easy Friday continues. Shiksha has some interview, in, very interesting interview after this. Absolutely. We're speaking to Ruguru, so make sure you're tuned in. Uh, for now, though, it's time for a short commercial break. I'll be back, but... For me, I have to say good night. <laughs>
us that we accept. And it's Callahan and L.A. Park for all the marbles. Take a musical trip around Africa right here on KBC Channel 1. Every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. on Afro Vibes. Because this is the hottest show right now. We give you a musical cocktail from North Africa, Central Africa, West, South and East of Africa. We are... Your Sunday will never be the same again with DJ D and DJ Leo on Afro Vibes. Your musical passport to Africa. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself. Which way, that way, which way, that way, which way, that way, which way, that way. 
Easy Friday, I am Shiksha Aurora with you. That was Ruguru, a young artist who is super talented. She's got lots of energy and quite a promising one, I must say. I've seen her perform in studio, um, loved every bit of it. And welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank How you do you much. feel being here? I feel very nice. <laughs> um, I haven't performed in Olav in some time. Okay. So it felt nice to like hear it again. Finally perform, yeah, you know. That's yeah. a great tune, by the way. Is that mm -hmm. your first single? No, um, it must be like my third single. Okay. Um, but it's my first single with the label that I signed to. Oh, yeah. interesting. And my first music video. All right, so it's yeah. just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> promising future. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, you know, maybe you can tell us a bit about, about yourself, where you're from, how did your journey begin? Who is Ruguru? Uh, Rogoro is a 21-year-old musician. I'm Kenyan and I started singing when I was like in kindergarten. Oh. Yeah, so I've just been singing ever since like Christmas concerts, uh, plays, uh, whatever it is yeah. that I could sing in, <laughs> I would sing in. Right, so you yeah. always like, you know what, always. I want to just be a singer. I just want to sing. Yeah, you just yeah. want to sing. Yeah. <laughs> it gives you lots of happiness, I'm I assume. a simple woman. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, okay, so, mm -hmm. so tell us a bit about your journey in the sense, you know, did you finish high school, after high school, did you go on to pursue music or you went on to, you know, do something else? How has that been? Um, yeah, I finished high school. I'm in university right now. Oh, okay, yeah. so side by side. Yeah, exactly. I just finished exams, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been a tough one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, um, I'm at Daystar. I'm studying international relations okay. uh, and I feel like international relations and music can go really well yeah, together. Yeah, they go hand in hand, exactly. right? Yeah, okay. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, let's talk about the music industry in Kenya and you know, mm -hmm. I've seen your video. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a pretty well shot video in terms of budgets, in terms mm -hmm. of all of that. You're just 21 years old yeah. and how has the journey been so far, you know, trying to come mm -hmm. up with big budgets to come up with mm -hmm. a video that looks like that mm -hmm. um, and of course getting signed under a new label. So how has that process been? Um, it's been tricky, okay. that's for sure. Um, before I was signed, it was really hard, especially to like come up with a concept like this music video that I made. Yeah, it would be like it would like <laughs> thinking about making a music video when I was solo would like give me headaches. <laughs> really, <laughs> because it's so expensive. It is. I agree. Yeah, it's so expensive, and like for good measure because like you're paying for these quality. producers and like yeah mm. these videographers to give you quality work yeah so it's not like it's expensive and you're getting shoddy jobs yeah, yeah. but like when you're by yourself it's <laughs> it's a lot yeah. so I had like the advantage of being signed and having my label like provide the music video for me oh that's amazing so it, like I'm really happy about it because like it saved me a lot of stress and a lot yeah. of money yeah. that I didn't have yeah. <laughs> yeah so I'm really happy about that the label like came in yeah. we made the songs um, it's been like a really nice dynamic that we have going on okay. because before I'd have to worry about okay studio time yeah. I need money for studio time I need money for a music video I need to pay producers I need to pay a sound engineer I need to yeah. that's <laughs> a lot <laughs> yeah that's a lot that you've got going on I have to write and I have to sing and, and you have, have exams exactly. and you're in school <laughs> exactly wow yeah so it would be a lot like thinking about it but like with the label now they came and they took that aspect of like you know planning you know okay. you have studio time you have to do this you, ha you need this producer all of that all I do now is just like make music and I'm so happy about that yeah which makes you happy at the yeah. end of the day because you know you've got everything else covered um, in terms of the stress mm -hmm. you know and, exactly. and the behind the scenes exactly. nobody really knows how hard it is and how challenging it is mm -hmm. being a young artist to exactly. break through and of exactly. course come up with money and budgets to it's be able to fund your music videos exactly it's so hard because like if you think about it like a um, hundred percent like 70 percent of your time and energy is going to planning the business side of yes. music the 30 percent that you're left with is now like okay i need to make music so you won't make quality music because mm -hmm. you don't have your 100 mm. percent like you don't have that and i'm so like i look up to solo artists because i know that it's really stressful yeah. so i understand like you, you're actually doing this all by yourself and yeah. you're making quality music. It's yeah. commendable. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, since you've mentioned the stress of, mm -hmm. of, of having to go through all of this yeah. um, and of course still being able to produce quality music mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So for young artists, do you think that right now it's much harder to break through? I feel like it depends. Okay. 
like on your drive it depends yeah. on your drive and your talent and also connections as well like building friendships connections is yeah, everything exactly yeah. building friendships like within the industry because it can take you so far yeah, it can take you places exactly so it really depends on how you go about it if you just make music and then you just like put it in just you're yeah. just like okay that's it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like i don't yeah. know what will happen <laughs> but if you actually go out and like market yourself and you push yourself on social media and you like you network exactly, yeah it will go so well so it depends like i feel like young people as well they have so much energy we have mm. we have so much energy absolutely <laughs> exactly yeah and we we've, we've come up with so many like new things like especially like young people in right. kenya Yeah. We've come up with a lot of new yeah. genres and like different types yeah. of music. So yeah. what would you say is your genre of music um and what kind of music are you interested in doing in the future? Um my genre right now is more like it's like a fusion of a lot of things cuz usually when I like a beat I will sing on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So right now it's just afro afro pop Afro R&B. Yeah. There's no love. I mean your song was R&B for R &B, sure, yeah, right? Definitely. It had an R&B vibe. Exactly. I felt like a lot of Ariana Grande vibes going on there. That's <laughs> it. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's it. That's like I love Ariana Grande so much. So yeah. you're inspired by her, aren't you? I can see it. A <laughs> hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so Ariana Grande like pop type of music. Okay. Um R&B. Yeah, and Afro. I really want to like Yeah. I want to do afro yeah. so badly. I love afro. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, so nice. So you draw mm -hmm. inspiration from, you know, the the west as well as just looking at the afro industry here in exactly. Kenya. There's so much potential and mm -hmm. we've seen how it's the rise of the afro music, especially the past 2-3 years. I'm yes. a piano oh. and you know, we've gangeto wow. and like afro music in general yeah. as a whole. Mm -hmm. We've seen how wholesome it's become mm -hmm. and and how artists are really taking it to the top. Mm -hmm. So like who are some of the artists that you'd love to collab with and you know mm. you look up to here in Kenya for mm. instance mm. okay so there are a couple of you have them. a list yeah <laughs> you saw like okay number one yeah. <laughs> um so i'd really like to work with um the like r&b um like soul artists like karun and okay. zania manas okay and um i'd really want to work with rappers like um what's his name Um Barack Jacuzzi. Oh, Barack. Okay. Yeah, uh King Kaka. I don't talk with Nviri as yes. well. Then Soul, Saudi Soul. Okay. Um Nameless and yeah. Who as well. Yeah. Um I think that's it. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, mm -hmm. and maybe you you know some advice that you'd like to give young people who are trying to break through um who are trying to follow their dreams of being a musician but they don't mm. know where to start. Mm. So what would you say to them? Where do you start? I think you just like pick up that mic pick up your phone if you're going to record on your phone okay. and just sing just if sing. you're going to sing sing if you're going to rap yeah. rap just do it yeah. cuz life is so short absolutely you'd want to leave this world knowing that you did what you loved and what about social media you know the game mm. has changed immensely mm. because now we feel like you can make connections on social media you mm. can network through social media yeah. so what advice would you like to give young people who are mm. trying to use social media to their mm. advantage to create these very important crucial networks um i'd tell them that like marketing yourself on social media is actually quite affordable like instagram for example um or facebook when yeah. you're putting up an ad on yeah. facebook they give you like your budget like they ask you what's your budget mm. and they formulate like a whole plan Absolutely. based on Absolutely when you have so a promotion that goes out Exactly if you have 100 bob put in 100 bob yeah. they'll promote your your content for 100 So you don't really need to have exactly. a whole sum of money right exactly. Anything small just mm -hmm. give it a push just put it yeah. and there you go Exactly All right so in the next 2 to 3 years where do we where do you see yourself Oh, that's that's an interesting question. I see myself so far. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Which is good because you're a dreamer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um I want to be performing at a festival. Okay. Like a Coachella type of festival oh, wow. or like a um Burning Man. Yeah. Um Governor's Ball, yes. something like that. Okay. Big on a big scale exactly. on a large scale exactly. all right and just as we're wrapping up you know we can't let you go without you singing your favorite song for us yes. unplugged mm -hmm. so ruguri is going to drop a few lines mm -hmm. and uh, you know she's a talented young artist so go follow her go listen to her music support her and encourage her so ruguru mm -hmm. take it away the um okay let's do this so this is called
this bang about to drop Time for take off and you know that I won't stop It's my season, we about to pop Hot as a rock, blowing up like TikTok Stop the chit chat, no I ain't no pleaser This a teaser, you can follow me on Insta at Rogoro Tanya. Yes! <laughs> Do follow her. And that's it from us right here. We are the hashtag Easy Friday team. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Shiksha Aurora. We'll do this again with you next week. Same time, same place. Do stay tuned. And that's it from me and the gorgeous Rogoro today. Beauty and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Fika and Meru. Did you know that we are a TVET approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design in soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks, beauty therapy, makeup, nail technology, spa massages, teaching skills, TOT, solo business management, and many more. Register now and visit our website on www.verabeautycollege.com. You can also call on 0725-923-550 Nairobi Branch, 0728-087-689 Eldoret Branch, 0722-227428 Thicker Branch, 0725 Zero 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 seven zero six Meru Branch Vera Beauty and Fashion College, a TVET approved institution. My name is Jeneria Leklele and I'm a wildlife warrior. This dry landscape is home to an animal that is revered all around the world. I love lions because many people think that lions are dangerous, but lions are not dangerous actually. So far we've found a footprint of hyenas and leopard on this riverbed, but we haven't yet seen any signs of lions. Lions are actually disappearing in the world. If nothing will be done in Kenya actually, I think we'll be losing lions in the next 20 years. Take a musical trip around Africa right here on KBC Channel 1. Every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. on Afro Vibes. Because this is the hottest show right now. We give you a musical cocktail from North Africa, Central Africa, West, South and East of Africa. We are live and we are loud. We are party today. I want to show them my attitude. Your Sunday will never be the same again with DJ D and DJ Leo on Afro Vibes. Your musical passport to Africa. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to enjoy myself.
the way, nothing gets me pumped up like today's lesson. I hope teacher is coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now you want me to spit out uh, my business strategies, is it you? Do you want this dance or not? Father, what is wrong with you? Julian, don't mind him, he's just like a porcupine. One year, how many girls were you fooling around with? What? I did no such thing. Oh, you did no such thing. Huh? <laughs> it is my word against you. You must stop it. Wow, black men. Typical Kinyanju. Wake me up when all this is over. When I'm wiser and I'm older. Classmates, every Saturday on KBC. Listen, hakuna mwanamke asha participate kwa underground fights. Oh, Mimi ndiye nitakuwa first. Melata rent. Una fikiri za chukua hizi chapa?
got poison on their minds No ignorance can never be excused I'll do my best to shake off their attitudes I'm walking away again But there's one thing that will make me take a stand If my brother's in trouble, I will always help him out If my brother's in trouble, I will turn the world around I will fight for his right, I'll be there no matter where 